What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a Friday edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. Uh, appreciate all the engagement. You guys know on a Friday, we go heavy with the betting lines in the NFL with our good friend, the prop, kind enough to join us. And as always, our football Friday and betting edition is uh, brought to you by our wonderful friends over at Played Against Sports. Look, I know we just turned the page on November, but they've got a ton of sales coming up. Um, door busters, sales, half off leading up to Black Friday week. And, you know, we've talked about it all week long. They've got the baseball gloves, high tier, golf drivers, putters, sets, adult hockey skates, protective gear, everything you need. Mention you heard it right here on BYP. You'll get an extra 10 added to the buy or take 10% off your next entire order. And prop, the first thing I have to say is whew, the Arizona Diamondbacks got me off the hook because that would have been a hard pill to swallow, not taking them to win the World Series. But uh, listen, I, I, I watched a little bit of the World Series. I'll tell you, though, you know, those after the fact um, calculations, Texas was 10 and 0 in the postseason. So they started with a twenty four dollar bet. And if you would have just kept doubling, 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 you would have had about 40 something odd grand. Um, but again, that's your classic Monday morning quarterbacking. Right. So uh, kind of a snooze fest in a World Series. And, you know, that's kind of where we're at. A lot of NFL little college football, little college hoops as well. So how are you? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that World Series. I, I sent a tweet out. I said, you know, if this World Series was a horse, I would have took it out back and shot it already. <laughs> because I, I really, uh, uh, not only is it terrible, or was it terrible to even contemplate watching it, if you're in the in the Philadelphia area, you know, you really uh, – you, you, it was kind of right in your face. Like, how did you lose – to this team, hey, you know, it happened. They had a good year. They were free rolling. And then when they made the World Series, I just kind of knew uh, I, I, the, the line was relatively low for Texas. It opened uh, the series. Uh, the, I, the, the look ahead, uh, they were 135, minus 135 against any opponent as Philly and Arizona played the game seven. And then you really had a deal if you played Texas there because Arizona at the upset and then went to 175. It quickly went up to two to one and hovered around there, 195. So basically you were laying right around two to one to play Texas, which I thought was a pretty decent, decent bet. Because, uh, of course, I'm not, it looks like hindsight now yeah. because that they were the better team, but uh, they were, Texas was. And, uh, you know, they got it done and people are happy for Texas. Uh, Bruce Bochy now, uh, uh, three different, uh, what, how many worlds? I think he has four worlds, four rings or something now. And and uh, somebody said something pretty interesting about it, uh, uh, how poor this was to watch if you weren't living in Arlington or even Phoenix. I think the Phoenix people cared if they're, <laughs> if they're game three. But he said, you know, if this game was in August, how much would you pay to go to the game? What's the max? And I think I, uh, if these two guys were, these two teams were playing and I, and I, I couldn't come up with a number, I guess 20 hours. I thought people say free 10 bucks. Sometimes you get a bad, you get a bad world series. I mean, listen, when, when yes. Colorado played St. Louis, that was a little different. No one was getting giddy over Colorado, but St. Louis is a hell of a baseball town. I mean, sometimes you just get, a bad no player. Red Sox right when they lost. Oh, I'm sorry, Red Sox. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Part of me. Part that of was me. kind of a bad yeah. run. Yeah, I knew you meant. I know. I know. What Sox, am I thinking? Yeah, the Red Sox were in like every World Series. It's yeah, like, yeah. They were in the really. Plus, uh, they broke the curse, right? They broke the curse with that World Series. Was that against the St. Louis? That, that was a really good. That was the rolling team, and that was a hundred. They won, yeah. won over a hundred wins, and they got swept. Uh, by the it broke the curse. Yeah, Boston. And, yep. and in there, you had a bunch of. Uh, uh, I think the White Sox got in there and beat Houston. Yeah, uh, Houston. Houston beat St. Louis, and then uh, the the really bad one that I remember that was right in there. I think Texas. Uh, not counting COVID, it was Detroit St. Louis. That was All the right. one where Eddie Rogers had the had the stuff on him on his hand, and they opened the Detroit, and it was forty degrees and. And that was a real, nobody really watched that. And St. Louis won that. And then uh, 2007 was the poor one you just alluded to. And then, you know, it was surprising that even the Phillies Tampa Bay was one that was a, what wasn't a great rain delay. You know that, that was bad because of the rain, because that was one of the first times that uh, rain killed a game. And then it killed 
the whole next day. And I noticed when I looked back and looked at some of the Nielsen's for some, some of these uh, series, even if it wasn't a great matchup, if you got to game six or game seven, they went up about 20%. Uh, you would have uh, the Cleveland uh, Cubs series had good numbers. Game six had great numbers. Game seven had phenomenal numbers. It was like a 21 or 22. So you had like, you know, 25, 26 million people watch it. Now compare that to the 70s with the Reggie, Reggie years, uh, uh, Reggie with the three homers and yep. coming up the Kansas 77, Bar, 78. And, and, then the, and then the Phillies, Kansas City, which was the first, uh, you know, the two teams that kept losing in, the, mm -hmm. in their, their uh, NL and ALCSs. And, you know, 40 million plus people watched that. Yeah. Uh, the Reggie's here was like 42 million. So, you know, it was right in that range. So you're talking, uh, well, you know, your, your, your viewers and listeners can, can do the math how crazy it is. I know everything's segmented, but uh, you really don't want to have uh, 8 million people watching the World yeah. Series. When, when, you know, I know it's a different world than four years ago, but when you're getting 25 or 26 million watching and 20, you know, 2017, you really, if you're going to get a bad matchup, you won't want it to go six or seven games. So we'll see what happens. It's too early, I think, to gauge the playoffs, uh, the expanded playoffs being poor or great. Uh, you know, we move on. Luckily, last week was a great card. It was a lot of uh, uh, great, really good college games to offset you know, uh, the, the, the sadness that's in, that was in this area right. because of the, <laughs> he's losing. And then uh, uh, you had some decent game, NFL games. Uh, and today, this week in NFL, I can't remember a week. Uh, do you remember the uh, – I want some of your viewers sometimes that I bring up stuff or we bring up stuff they don't know. Google's your friend. Just look this up. Off the top of my head, remember the year uh, that they, the NFL tried to offset injuries, and they had double bye double, weeks. double double bye weeks. Well, for in my head, my memory, I, I swore they did it two years. I think they only did it one, and because the backlash was so poor, and it was really poor because if you had two teams, you, the, the card was decimated. Yeah. You end up having like one good game, and you didn't. And I don't think anybody realized that fans or schedules alike and they did away with it this week kind of reminds me of that because it's a weird quirk you had a really good game a great great match which up. shouldn't it be at 9 30 by the way and it's 9 30 and it's in frankfurt so it, it's really i mean tough it, it's for uh for everybody for fans for uh it just it, it's a head scratcher we're you know, you thought that maybe some of these other matches were going to be a little bit better, but we, we're here and now you have the 9.30 a.m. matchups, great. The night matchups, great. Thank God that Burrow's uh, healthy. You got four and then you have the four, And then you have the four o'clock Eagles down. Yeah. So, uh, and then outside of that, you got a little bit of juice with this Baltimore-Seattle. Uh, and then if you look at the matchups of everybody else, I mean, the Green Bay Rams, it's just everybody's just – struggling it's not terrible for 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 betters which is you know what 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 we'll, we'll touch on but as far uh as being uh then you know i'm greedy I want everything i want to have all the good matchups i want them all to be spread out i want kansas city miami to be the marquee game at four o'clock but you know at, why they're in germany because they want to get a team in Germany. They're expanding the game. So now all of a sudden, boom, you got two of the best teams in the AFC. It's going to be a frigging track meet as long as the field is playable and the weather holds up. And you're probably going to look at potentially a 38-35 type of game and all the fans over there are going to be, uh, and Goodell's going to sit there, cha-ching, 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 here we go. That is the same thing. If we get up at 930, which, you know, uh, I think the clock, uh, get, <laughs> you get an extra hour of sleep. I think Saturday, right? So it's not that, uh, you know, the diehards are going to get up. Uh, and I think you're right. It's going to be a great game. Uh, I don't know if they can set the, the total high enough. Uh, but I do throw this out. I, this is a Kansas City defense. I think it's the best defense they've had uh, since 
the first Super Bowl year, and I think it's better than that that year. This is a, a really good defense. So uh, you kind of saw what happened when Miami played uh, uh, Sunday night against uh, Phillies. You saw kind of what happened Phillies, the Eagles. And you saw what happened when they played at Buffalo, and, and Buffalo was a little motivated. Yep. The game still went over. But uh, I think – I don't think that this will get that high – uh, I didn't play it. So if you do have an opinion on the over, I'm not going to argue against it. I do just say, warn that, you know, Kansas City does have a, have a have a quality defense. I think you throw out last week's upset to Denver. It's tough to beat a team 900 times in a row. Yes. And Denver was 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 close a few times, just like the Raiders were close a few times when they had two K teams. Uh, one of these you're going to slip up. When you're going to slip up, you'll be on the road. Might not be that big a deal if Kansas City – wins this game Sunday, which I think they will. I like Kansas City in the game. It's under three. I th- I think it's a shot, a good shot that this could be three at game time. So if you miss it, uh, I think it's much more likely that it's going to be three as opposed to a pick em. Hmm. Uh, uh So I do like Kansas City game. I did play it when it was one, and I played it at one and a half. I don't think it's that much that big of a deal. Uh uh, if you want me to gauge the risk, I'd say it's a my it's a it's a decent size play. Uh, I have one other play. It's a little bit higher, but I, I, the more the week goes on, uh, it, it's a decent play. I, I worry only because when you have a team like uh, like Miami, you almost have have to look at this Miami team if you're handicapped and like the way you look at Cincinnati. Cincinnati's early numbers. You almost have – I don't want to say throw them out because you are who you are, but Burrow is hurt. And you have, it's really tough to quantify how good is Cincinnati because you you saw last week how good they are. This is – people are dumping on San Fran, but uh, San Fran's good and Cincinnati's also good. Yeah, so it, it, it's good, a good point. I, you know, yeah. I, I think neither team uh, Sunday morning wants to kind of see the opposing offenses on the field, but – I, I feel as though Kansas City's ticked off. That was a bad loss to Denver, as you alluded to. They beat them for so many years in a row. They stubbed their toe. They're going to be motivated. And there's a lot riding on this game. I mean, when you really break it down, you're trying to get that top seed in the AFC. Miami does not want to go to Arrowhead in January when it's snowing. Are you kidding me? So I do like Kansas City um, in this game. You 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 brought up a really interesting point with some of these some of these dog games, if you will, not underdogs, but just where you look at them and you're like, oh, my God, the Cardinals and the Browns and, you know, Watson's probably not going to play. You got the Giants and the Raiders. That line's moved. Now, let me ask you something on that game. The Giants and the Raiders. The Giants are horrible. We know that. Daniel Jones is, uh, by all accounts, going to play, going to start, cleared for contact. Okay. But when you have a team that makes a move in season and they clean house – People right away, even the novice better will sit there and say, oh, man, I'm going to run through a wall. Antonio Pierce and they bench Garoppolo and they made a change and they're going to be more loose. I love the Raiders in this spot. To me, that's the worst type of line of thinking you can have as a better because you're going on emotion. You're not betting the game, the number itself. Would you agree with that? Well, I like the difficult part of everything in football. There's just not enough games. There's not enough data to really – Say, okay, look, I have this theory and I've tested it, I back tested it, and then I, I I regressed it to you know what the closing line was. And it, you know, my theory, it it it, it beat, you know, the closing line, you know, over 800 trials. It was 55% or 56%. That's something valuable. It's really difficult to come up with that. In football, yeah, because a lot of times those instances, how many do you have? You almost have to go down with your 60 or 50 trials and then say, you know what? I, I was 40 and you don't 20 have a, and I have a hunch. I'm right you don't that. have it. You don't have it. There, there's too many variables. Like how many? I'd have there's, to go back and yeah, say, oh, let me look at all the teams that fired a, a head coach in midseason and see what they well, did. Well, that's a great point because it never happens. And I think – I don't know why it doesn't happen. Like it, why does it happen in other sports? It, it, there's some one thing about football, you know, if it's one thing's done correctly, the league kind of copies it. If it's a certain kind of a, 
uh, remember the zone blitz or not, you know, de-emphasizing running backs, whatever it is, people kind of, uh, you know, uh, getting out of a four three and having ed- more edge rushes, whatever it is, it's, a, it's kind of a copycat. They're slow to make changes. And I think it's slow in almost everything you, you, you bring up. And one of these things is firing your coach in the middle of the year. Somewhere it came up with, oh, we can't fire the coach in the middle of the year. We're going to keep this lousy coach. Because, well, because I guess it looks like to your fans that you've given up. I don't think so. I think it look it looks to your fans that you're that you're not sticking with the same uh, bad coach. So, uh, 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 people knew three weeks ago that that, that uh, McDaniel's wasn't a coach. I knew before he got hired that he wasn't a good. I, 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 uh, sadly, he's going to reflect poorly on Belichick. But you know, some of these guys just. I think it's because of Belichick. Uh, you know, I don't. I think. Belichick's not Bill Walsh. He didn't share what he was doing a lot. He wasn't say here, here's, he didn't write a book to say, here's, here's how I build the team. And I allocate, I think he, he says, you know, uh, I know how to do the defense. Basically everybody's a glorified assistant for me. Right. And, and I want to be a little overly involved in the offense. I, I think that you, you see that from Romeo Cornell all the, all the way down. Uh, overall point being is, I think it's good that they fired the coach. I do think there is something good for the team because the team don't wanted him gone. And after last week's game, you're going to tell me uh, Devontae Adams and go back and say well, something that, like, that, you know, that's definitely it. something he definitely had something to do, to do with Garoppolo getting getting uh, benched. And uh, I think he didn't get traded the trade deadline because they would at least have something there for uh the next you know maybe if it's a good coach maybe it's harbaugh with all the problems that are going on in michigan i think it's you know it's a done deal that harbaugh harbaugh's going to be in the in the nfl now do, 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 do people hate him he's a polarizing guy but I think he's, he's a good coach yeah uh he uh, a guy like mark davis could use him remember he left san fran because he had he had problems after he went to the super bowl they went eight and eight the next had, year yep he yep. had internal problems and, you know, horrible, horrible personalities is, uh, you know, take his ball, go home kind of thing. Like, Hey, I built this. So there's a lot of stuff. You don't want horrible to roll in and, you know, they don't have that. They don't have anything. Although this draft is going to be pretty deep with quarterbacks. I, I think the, the hook is to keep the wide receiver there. Uh, I think it's, it's good that they fired him. I don't know if it's necessarily Good right. for the so, Raiders to, that they'll cover, but I think if you're gonna, if you, I think there's not a no way you can play the Giants here simply because I don't like teams, uh, whatever metrics use. I don't like teams that don't that don't score. They we're can't already, score. We're already the middle point of the year. Uh, Both teams can't know, score. It's not like the backup was a huge drop off. That's like Toronto tells you drop off from Daniel Jones. Uh, 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 so. You know, uh, I don't like that they can't – so you're going to put them as a fate? Uh, you know, initially they came out, it was a pick or what was the open – it just – and then this on top of it, what would the line, what would the line have been if if uh, there was no firing? It, would, it probably would have been about the same. You know, uh, uh, it, it's just a – it's a weird thing. I know you don't like the Raiders, but if I had to play, I, would, I probably would play the Raiders because I can't play the Giants. Yeah, I'm not playing this game. I just thought it was interesting. I'm not touching it. I mean, if anything, I might go light on the under because I don't believe they're going to be able to move the football. But Urban Meyer. Does this start a trend with maybe teams saying, uh, all right, the trade deadline's done. Uh, We have, you know, a five to eight percent chance to make the playoffs. We're, We're not dumping. But we would like. Why is Rivera still coaching? Yeah, the, the, the well, I'm scared. I'm, yeah, so like, what, what, like, what it is the co- maybe the enemy being the, the, being the coach? Maybe that dynamic is a little bit screwy. Maybe it's loyalty to to Rivera to Rivera uh, because he's made every decision poorly yeah. this entire year. But he's had to coach under Daniel Snyder. This is something I haven't heard from national media. Give him more wiggle coach, room now. From Peter King all the way down to – I think all these guys are awful for not bringing up how difficult this has been. 
This, this would have been different. This reminds me of when Belichick was in Cleveland. And, and some of the younger guys don't, don't remember this. You know, he's at Cleveland. They go 11 and 5. He had no quarterback. They, the next year, I think they go 8 and 8. But they're in the conference with, with, with Pittsburgh. And then Modell wants to get out of Cleveland. The, the entire offseason, the whole season, it's hanging over their head. And, you know, I, you can't over, overstate how big a deal it was. And I remember they made the announcement in November, we're leaving. You know, we're going to Baltimore. Now, think about it, that happening now. You yeah. talk about teams, they're sensitive about hot firing their coach because of the fans. Or Modell's just like, we're leaving and we don't care what happens to the fans. So, and, and, so it was almost like lame, lame, lame duck. Yeah. So, do they are are they just trying to let? I get a feeling they're just letting Rivera play out. I think so. See what happens because think of, you know the guy uh, the, the 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 group is the uh, the, the Sixers guy. Yep. So, uh, but like I see no reason for Rivera to be there. Uh, and then you can can pick off the top of your head. Who else? I think Tampa's a unique situation. I think Bowles is doing them a favor. He didn't want to coach. I think they said be a place holder for, for He's a one coordinator. Year. Yeah. I was just going to say. he might actually keep that job. Keep I was going to say Hugh Jackson, Chip Kelly, Mike McCarthy, Urban Meyer, Gary Kubiak. Remember they got rid of Judge because he was a clown. Shermer as well. Those are some notable guys that have been fired, you know, but sometimes you had to make the change. The the judges, the Shermers, the Kubiaks, um, um, the uh, the Myers, and who was the guy, uh, the Zorn with Washington years ago. So I don't know if this is a load off the Raiders, you know, uh, shoulder, so to speak. But at the end of the day, you also do have pretty much uh, a backup now coming in and surplanting Garoppolo. To your point with the Giants, they trade off Williams. They kept Saquon. No Waller, still the issues with the offensive line. Part of me as a Giant fan is like, you know what? Hell, go three and friggin' 14. You're not going to fire the head coach. You're not. You're going to give them another year or so. But go three and 14. Who knows what Arizona is going to do? That worries me because Arizona is going to have 12 friggin' draft picks. They might have the top pick. Um, they might go for a quarterback. But that's a discussion down the road. But to your point, uh, yeah, I don't like some of these head coaches on hot seats and some of these spots. It makes me very weary on how to look at the game. I mean, look, did you you played that you probably played in game live betting last week when the Eagles are Washington? Why? Because Rivera is so bad, he doesn't challenge another, you know, catch no catch. I mean, it, it just the coaching is so bad. I I I have to go against those types of head coaches. Is my point. So there's only a certain amount. Of, I mean, if you look at how many plays or snaps for each team, what's the average? Seventy-five or in that range. So, uh, uh, you know, these guys can, can screw up five of them with not not. It changes the whole you know, complexion of the game. You change, yeah. So if you're going to get, if you think on average you're going to get, you know, uh, four to seven maybe big plays or deciding plays, and the coaches, you know, and three of them are, are coaches' challenges. You, you know, have a, remember in the NFC Championship last game when the, the, the first, uh, the, the the third and and uh, yep. the fourth and one didn't get challenged, and it was an incomplete pass. How 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 big was that? That was worth three plays. Yeah, you know, she, she doesn't challenge. They go in. So a guy like Rivera or some of these other guys is going to screw that up. I I think you're right. I do think that is reflected in the line smarter. Smart people, smart groups are thinking the same thing. They're saying, listen, you know, this guy's gonna gonna screw that up. But you know, if you're off the, the radar of being horrible uh at that, like the way Rivera is, it, it, it I think there's a portion of that in the line. Of course, the line, you know, if you got six and a half like last week with the Eagles, congrats. If you got seven with Redskins, also congrats because you got the, the backdoor push. Uh he did not go for two down to two touchdowns, which was kind of interesting because now that's kind of of the uh, the thing to do now. I always, for 15 years, I thought it was the thing to do. You know, Brian Billick did it 20-something years ago, uh, I believe by accident because I think his kicker got hurt. And people were like, what, you know, what the heck is he doing? And Wait, you know, I'm out, glad you brought that up. He, by stumbled, the way. he stumbled into the right thing to do. 
It, because it, it go, and I, I don't want to harp on this game, but I have to vent for a moment. It sure. goes back to Dayball last season. Um, Dayball, pardon me. He was so aggressive going for two on the road against the Titans. We saw the fourth and short. Now they put the kicker on the friggin' IR, right? So your kicker misses. The Jets had a very good play with the defender leaping over to alter the kick. If that's straight on, it's blocked, return for a touchdown. Okay, fine. But then you've got fourth and one. You're going to go for it on fourth and nine, but you're not going to go for it on fourth and one. So it's it damned if you do, damned if you don't. You run Saquon, you get stopped, you lose seven yards. You kick the field goal, you miss. They still got to go down the field. But point being is sometimes these coaches overthink it, but just be consistent, Right. You can't be aggressive your rookie year as a head coach, and then all of a sudden you curl in a ball. I mean, it's like no one's saying be like Staley, who goes for it on like fourth and 10 from his own 10-yard line. But fourth and short, the analytics now basically is go get a yard, and they still want to – Oh, well, the, 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 the counterpoint is, well, uh, we know what the numbers are, uh, but your uh, – you know, who's playing now? Is that, is that, how much does that play into? I think fourth and one, I don't care if you're blind. Uh, fourth and one, you're, if you're on an NFL roster, get a yard and you're on that field, it's really, really, really difficult to stop somebody for one or two yards. One yard, it's just incredible. Get a yard. And for people that say, oh, it happens all the time, you know, those numbers are in a vacuum, it's a yard. Uh, it's a yard. Uh, uh, you practice short yardage. The backups practice short yardage. The practice team practices short yardage. You can get the yard. Uh, make up, have some good, have some better plays. You know, whatever, uh, however you you're going to do it. I I agree. I don't I don't. And, and you have Taylor, or if you have Devito, he, they're, they're, they're athletes. The, the, the negative of the third string was they didn't want to throw him. Well. Go for go, you have an extra running back in there, basically. Go wild! I, I don't like to to see that. Uh, Sirianni had uh, a fourth and and a, and a I'm going to call it a short five, but it was five, and uh, went for it, got it, and Eagles scored the touchdown. And I think that sequence can't be understated because when if he did not get it, everybody would be all over him, and the reporters would point to that play. No reporters bring it up. It's because it works. So it, it kind of drives me crazy that the, that it, it only – it's almost like this first word. If I do it uh, nine times as successful, you're going to harp yeah. on the one time I don't get it or the three times I don't get it. Uh, good for Staley is it, he doesn't care. He's – like what I said, as far back as when uh, Rodgers – and Green Bay were big dogs yep. in Seattle, yep. and they were inside the five in the, in the in the in the championship game, and they kicked two field goals. With McCarthy and I said, "You can't win the game, you know, if you're not going to at least try one of those inside." And all that crazy stuff happened again. And I remember at the end, I said, "You, you, you can't." The, the players were now saying you can't win the game. Yeah. And I blame Rodgers for that because I would have said, listen, you, you have to do it. And that, that power, Rodgers ended up winning. McCarthy ended up getting fired. But it, it, was back, it goes, I go back that far to yeah, doing it because point. with the rationale of I could stay, I would stand up in front of the reporters going, did you see who my quarterback is? Yeah. Yep. So you have an excuse. I don't care if he throws a, throws a, a, a pick six. So uh, there's this. I can't understand what Dable's doing. The only thing I think of is that he thinks uh, his his uh, team is slightly different. He's playing with some third stringers. Uh, he lost the game, and I think if you're consistent, you're going to win those more than, than, than you're going to lose. Uh, and you don't have to do three and fourteen, Rich. You don't have to do three and fourteen to get a good pick. Because I think the draft is deep. You don't have to get the USC guy. He's not the only guy. Well, he might not. He pick. might not turn around and come out if Arizona's got the number one draft pick. And remember, look at Will Levis. Look at Will yeah. Levis. Uh, yeah. You know, he go back to Rogers. I remember Rogers got picked in the twenties, and, and yeah. Alex Smith got picked twenty, and he was furious. And that guy, this kind of thing fuels these guys. And yeah. I think Levis yeah. was some thing, and he was picked on the next day. He's he's two rounds worse. Yeah. Then, 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 uh, then somebody's got. I, I know that Stroud's playing, playing great, but I thought for sure the the limited amount that I saw of Levis, I said, 
and, and, and the data I had, I said, you know, I guess he's going to be a first round pick. Right. Who cares if he's a fourth round pick? The guy can, it, he's, the way the league is, if you're big and strong, you make some of the pass, you go to the quarterback camp, like the guy from Shepard in, in the piece at the Chicago Bears got, you go to Manning's camp, you can make yourself get in the league and then, then, then who my, knows? So my you only- might get somebody really good. And, and real quick, the last point on this, and then we'll, 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 I want to get to some of these games. My only point is a couple of years ago, Denver had no quarterback. They had to put the wide receiver out there, and they even let him throw the friggin' football. That's all I'm going to say, right? So anyway, I mean, I didn't, yeah, I didn't need Tommy go get your shoebox to like, you know, hand it off every 10 seconds. Um, you mentioned the Eagles and Sirianni. This, listen, this is a huge game, man, because come Monday, if Dallas wins, it's going to the national, you know, suck on the teat. Here you go, Cowboys Nation. This is, the, you know, the changing of the guard and all that crap. But if they go out and Prescott throws three picks and they get waxed 35 to 10, it's going to be clearly right now the Eagles are not only the best team in the NFC, but you can make the case the best team in the NFL. Now, right now, the lines dropped. I think it was a three and a half. It's three. So you're OK without the hook. Um, I, my gut, this is just my gut. My gut tells me the Cowboys are actually going to show up and this is going to be a close game. And I can see this a field goal game. I can see, I can see it being a one score game. I mean, even it's, you know, we can look, go back years and it it doesn't, doesn't matter when you, in the, when you play the teams in your division, unless the one team's putrid and the other team's really good, like say the Eagles giants. hundred percent. Eagles, Giants, issue. Uh, you're, you're always going to be probably right around. Look at Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Yeah. No matter what's going on, they play each other. Uh, and then when both are decent, it 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 it, it, it makes for a really good game, a one score game. Uh, this is why narratives are dangerous. I, when I looked at the look ahead line two weeks ago, it was three and a half at at, at, at limits. It wasn't a true three and a half when. Uh, they put some some good limits out, like you know when you could bet five thousand or three thousand minimum. Uh, you know that line was was three. It quickly went to three, three and a half. I think somebody put you know a couple hundred and made three. So it's solid three. Here's what's interesting: it hasn't changed at all. Now it could change. Could be late. You know, could be a Sunday because it's the late game. Early Sunday, you might see some money go one side or the other. I don't think it's going to move all three. If anything, I expect the Eagles to get a little bit juiced, maybe at maybe a, a heavier three, because the, the narrative what I meant with being dangerous is that the look ahead line. I said, you know, this is going to be. I could see the Dallas winning this game because the idea of them getting killed in San Fran and uh, you know was that in everybody's mind. That's gone now. You know, San Fran's gotten beat a couple times. Uh, they beat, San Diego, oh, San Diego. they beat the Chargers on the road. You know, uh, they absolutely, you know, blew out the Rams. I know the Rams aren't any good, but according to the to the market, they, you know, it wasn't like the Rams were, you know, two touchdown underdogs. They were they were okay. Now, you know, they, they they're hot, they play well at home. They had Dallas has a good defense. Uh Prescott is in his, you know, his can throw interceptions. If you play a good defense, he can screw your, 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 your game up. Uh, here's what's interesting for people looking at this game is you have to look at the next six weeks until the Eagles Dallas play again. Look who the Eagles have. Look at the Eagles have, have a much different. Here's what could happen. If this is close. Great you, point. Uh, you could lose 27, 20 here and Eagles could get the cover, get the win, play well, everybody feel good about themselves. Dallas is going to go on and play inferior competition. And I think you now I'm doing it off the top of my head. I'm looking around like I got it. I got it for you. I'm looking at the line. I'm looking at the eye. I look at the total. No, I got I got the games for you. They got after so, the Eagles, yeah, they got the Giants at Carolina, home against Washington. Stop right there. Stop against- right there. Stop right there. Those three. So Let's say the scenario happens where they where they lose. Let's say it's a worse scenario than that where the Eagles play really well, like they did against Miami. You know, it was close early. They pull lights, 31-17. Everybody's going, you know what? Everybody here 
And then, and then national media will jump on a little bit. Cynics like us will be a little bit like, well, let's see what happens. But national media say, told you, Dallas is frauds. Look how good the Eagles are. Boom, boom, boom. Well, that's Dallas's next couple games that I gave you. I know. I okay. know. If, I'm saying if Dallas loses. Oh, yes. Yeah. Then, 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 then they have this, this nonsense. So they, they play the, 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 they play the, you know, uh, those three in, in fear. They could go three and out. And then who's the fourth game in there? Yep. And then the Eagles conversely. Now think about no, that. No, what's the fourth game after Washington? Uh, the fourth Dallas? game. Yep. The fourth game for Dallas uh, is after uh, Eagles, Giants, Carolina, Washington. Then they play on a th- short week. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. They play on Thanksgiving, Washington, but then they also right. come back. Well, they have a full week Thanksgiving again, but they're both at home. So Washington, Seattle, and then Philly are your next three at home. Seattle is home. So they get a break too. They get a long break before they play the um, the Eagles again yeah. at week 14. That's yeah. Sunday night game. Right. So you think they could play again. And, uh, you know, now, now all of a sudden, because they lost by two touchdowns, that'll still end up being a closer line than you think. You know, uh, and – it's it, now Dallas wins that game. Now where are you? The Eagles had a much tougher. The overall point is this is going to come down to, to the wire, no matter what happens in this game. Uh, 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 now if Dallas wins, they're going to go on a run. This is a this is a, a bigger problem for the Eagles, and this is where uh, I think I think you either play Eagles or you don't play the game here because this is a unbelievably more important game for the Eagles. Now I know coaches say uh we play one game, game at a time. That's for the players. Their scouting assist uh, their their assistants look at film a game ahead. They get the scouting assistants, bring stuff, but so they're always looking at that. Uh it's 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 a tough stretch. For the Eagles. Now, in, in that stretch, they're going to win one. I could see them going into Kansas City and winning and then losing at Seattle. It, I, it's something like that. Well, here's the other thing. It's, here's another thing. It's a problem. Hurts isn't healthy. That's, and no one's talking about saying, that. It's, no, it's, saying, it, let's just say they lose to Dallas. They've got to buy, rest a little bit. You've got Kansas City, then Buffalo, San Fran, and Dallas again. So point being, if they stub their toe and all of a sudden they were say it, I don't know, plus 250 to win the East a couple losses. All of a sudden you're at plus 350. Remember Kansas city a couple years ago, they were three and four plus 450. They went on a run, grabbed them. Here you go. So when you go inside the numbers, so to speak, and you look at the schedule, this is this game, I believe not only determines the NFC East, but this potentially could determine the number one seed in the NFC because I still think San Francisco is a little flawed. Now, we might feel differently in a couple weeks when they play the Eagles, but I, and, and you're right to your point with Hurts. You know, everyone's jumping on Hurts now for MVP, but he is not healthy. He's banged up. And I know every player gets banged up, but there's, you know, there's a lot at stake here on Sunday at 425. Uh, I think the good part of, of what we're doing, we're talking about it like other people do, but then I'm going to tie it to, uh, you know, where I think there's some money to be had. And uh, the Eagles Dallas, I think, I agree with you, whoever comes out of the East, I think is going to be the one seed. I do think San Fran will bounce back, but I think that uh, – They'll they they could end up a two or a three. Yeah. And uh whoever is the odd team out will make the playoffs, but they, they'll be the first team that has to play at the five, the, the two or the yep. three, and they are gonna have to go on the road. So uh now you play it out, and then here comes the team that I played after they got, which I said on the show, and the numbers were really high. Perhaps and, which is my pick as well is, for the NFC. Go which ahead. Is the, which is the Detroit Lions. Now, when week four or week five, I said, ah, come on, <laughs> Detroit Lions. We shouldn't be talking about that anyway in week four, you know, September 21st or whatever the heck it was. And I said, give me, you know, get out. Okay, the Lions beat Kansas City. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
Uh, some people will count, over count the Ravens game. They, you know, hey, they got killed, blah, 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 blah. I said it before they played. I've been watching this a long time. I haven't heard anybody in national media, sports betting or otherwise, really look at that. Some of these guys have watched football longer than me. So I don't know what, I don't know what the NFL guys are doing. I think they're out to lunch. I think they're collecting paycheck. Peter King and he's, and, uh, uh, you know, your boy Lombardi. Guys, well, I don't can't even count Lombardi. God, he's, you know, he, 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 you know what he's done, but but the guys who, who who are really you know you think have objective opinions and they're just saying hey here's what I see. They don't look at at that game as oh they look at wow the Ra- the Ravens needed to win that game and it's a home game scheduling's a big deal uh, it matters and if it, it's not a true reflection of the team when you lose on the road at a conference out of division. And the Eagles are the Eagles, the Jets better than the Eagles. Yeah. It's just a it's a little bit of an anomaly. A lot of teams have it. Nobody goes 15 and one or 16 and one or how many games they play now. Well, uh, uh, can I can I nobody does that? So so my point is is I don't throw it out, but I it's I understand it and I know how these teams approach this. And what happened? They came back, they made the number high, higher than it. You know, you were able to get the Lions to now get uh, win the NFC when it was eight to one or seven to one. It went up to 12, 13, 14. Have you seen their remaining schedule? Of course. I, yeah. I had. Because, so, well, well, after the Ravens, you had who you had? You had the Raiders coming Raiders. in. And what did I say on your show? I said, there, I said, forget that game. So play the teaser with, with Bills and close it. And, Lions. Yep. Close and, it. Book end it. And then I said the Lions, and then lay. Not only am I going to play a teaser, lay lay the eight. Now everybody got nervous because the line came down. You know what that was? The line went too high. So those are eight and nine are dead numbers in a sense. But uh, if you everybody kind of play Detroit, and then you, there's a way to kind of play back. You know, some people play themselves back if they have overexposed the teaser money even. Uh, why even speculate what people are doing? Who cares? You have the number. To me, it was even a better number at seven. I didn't miss anything with it. I played it again. Detroit, you know, is going to win. Now, I get it. The game was close, closer than it kind of should have been, but the cream rose to the top. The final score is the final score. Uh, Golf didn't have a great game. Raiders aren't in that game as the pick six. Okay, that's what happened. Now, look, they got a, they have a tough Charger game. Yep. Uh, but then look at it after that. Read their schedule. Chicago. Chicago, winnable, going to win. Green Bay, winnable. The Saints, no offense. Chicago, again, Denver stinks. And then Minnesota, that has no frigging quarterback, whether they're going to go with the young kid or Dobbs. Then they close with Dallas. Now, you might you might bookmark that Saturday. Right I already did. That's in Dallas. Yeah. And then they close with Minnesota. They could, they so could, they could win 13 games this year. Yes. Which and, leads me to this. Now, with all that being said, I'm sure right now you're probably toying with the idea of a new potential dark horse for MVP. Well, yes. And before I give it to you, I'll give you the reason why. Uh, so I, I we, we, we hit the lot and we hit the Lions. I put it on Twitter. I said, you know, play, it's a good bet. Uh, some people are a little overexposed already because it's almost like the you know the Heisman. If you play too many guys, you can't make any money. You know, yeah. you can't, I got this thirty to one, this ten to one, this even money. But and now I got Bo Nix at seven to one. Well, he was thirty to one. I mean, you almost have to see this come afar. I don't want people to get overexposed. Who's going to uh, uh, win the win your NFC or AFC? But I kind of waited to see what was going to happen and. Smart. When I in season, when I got that, it, it, it's a, it's a narrative, but I have some data behind it. I got a good number on it, and then I think if the Lions do that, I have to think with no unbelievable running away favorite and MVP, I got a great number on uh, Goff. Believe it or not, after Goff's game and the Ravens. Uh, 
I got 42 to one for MVP and 40. And then some places were 38. Now, as soon as he, as soon as the Lions won last week, he's, he's, he's down a tick. The Lions are now, because yeah. people are looking at what we're looking at. So, oh, okay, wait a minute. They, they came up. Well, guess what? It's too late. We got the good number. I saw him as high as 45 to one, by the way. Right. And, but don't, and here's what it is. It got had, had a much better year last year, but the year's not done yet. Right. And if they went out, he's going to play decent. And as long as Mahomes doesn't run away, it, crazy, uh, you have a shot. And here's the real reason why you're alive. You just name the schedule. And now we get a spe- scheduling quirk that really helps the golf bet. It could come down to New Year's Eve night with the world watching. If he goes to Detroit, and light, to Detroit lights it up. Dallas, and he has three touchdowns and he has 310 and they win. That's all anybody's going to talk about. Yep. And and then you're going to hear this narrative also. The two, uh, I call them the original teams of the merger, AFL. Only two teams never played in the Super Bowl. Now, forget one. They never played. It's the Browns and Lions. Preseason, we talked about it. I think we mentioned on the show. I said something offhand. I said, you know, I, I have a small flyer that they both make it. Uh, well, I had that too, but the other Cincinnati, t- uh, the other Ohio team party. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, no, Cincinnati, Cincinnati's won. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 because you, you, you want Cleveland, get yeah. Cleveland, to, you, you'd rather have Cleveland. Well, Cleveland looked like, a you know, a, a more solid. Right. Bet. You're in the conference with Mahomes. You want NFC, everybody was talking about Eagles, San Fran, maybe Dallas. We'll see about Detroit. Now, all of a sudden, that when, if they get to a few more wins, which they're going to get, they win three more. Uh, by the time they get to New Year's Eve, yep. Campbell's going to be coach of the year. Campbell's going to be coach of the year. Goff's going to be live for MVP. And Detroit's going to be live for the one seed. Yep. And look look out about them going, going to the Super Bowl. So, of course, I want the Goff. I want, I want the whole thing. I want all three. Uh, but it's going to be – because if it, that happens, they got a cakewalk the next week. The Vikings will be playing. They'll bring back Tommy Kramer, I think. It won't, won't matter what week 17 is. And, and uh, uh, so I like, I mean, I love how this this set up. Uh, and because and, even if the Eagles, the Eagles aren't going to go crazy. It's, it's just too tough. There's too much parity. Yeah. Uh, I do think that, that if they get five seed, they can win. If San Fran somehow gets a five seed, they can win in Detroit. Uh, Eagles can win in San Fran. They all can win. Yeah, hundred percent. Places now. What did you just ask me? What's my backup? My backup is I don't think you play Mahomes. I don't think you play uh, Tyreek Hill. Forget Tyreek Hill's. Even if he he's having wide receivers not winning it. Wide receivers not winning it. They're just not. He's not. He's not going to. Win. It's just. Uh, it's out there. Unless the guy has three thousand yards, and even That's then, what I was then, say. then the quarterback then drives. Is, that means two is going to have six thousand, and two is going to win it. Uh, I don't think two is going to win it because I think Miami is going to end up sh- struggling to be the five. As good as they are, they don't play enough defense. And strangely enough, it's going to hurt two as MVP prospect. So listen, MVP is a subjective award. I, I hate say. it. When you handicap and think how other people are going, yep. not the right thing, how their other people are going to think about it. So when you're doing that, you throw out the wide receiver. So that's just smart. So uh, my backup is Burrow because Burrow, we didn't know how healthy he was two weeks ago, sure. three weeks yeah, ago, yeah. Whatever it was, after the bye week. Uh, now you see what they are when they're healthy. Uh, I think this is more to do with – them being really good and not San Fran being severely flawed. You know, San Fran, the year they went to the, uh, what they, was it was last year. I'm getting years mixed up, but they had, they still had a good defense. Kansas City went there and, and it was close, 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 close. And then the, all of a sudden the, the wheels came flying off San Fran and 
guys in San Fran's defense would say, listen, that's the best team we're going to see. And would they lose by 21, 28? Yeah. If you had teasers, you get crushed. If you had San Fran plus the three home, you, you're like, oh, this team stinks. No, the team is good. It's just you have a big game against a good offensive team, might not be prepared. How do you prepare for Jamar Chase? You can't. And, and a healthy borough. What do you practice it? You can't you practice in that. You can't. You put 12 guys and practice those guys against your 11 because that's about as fast as you're going to get. But he's 20 to 1. That's not a bad. I, one and of my dark horses is Lawrence, too, because I thought if Jacksonville has a pretty big year, it's going to be because of Trevor Lawrence. Yes. And he's still, he's live, but I don't think he's as sexy as Burrow. No. Burrow was hurt. He played horribly. They know he's hurt. Now, look, it's almost like comeback player of the year. It's heroic. Yeah. Yeah. If he ends up with 4,000 yards and a guy yeah. played on one leg. <laughs> so it's going to be, it could happen. And if they win this Sunday night, you like them against the Bills? Uh, it's interesting because I, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be a close game. The Bills. Well, the lines reflecting how close it is. It's stupid for me to say it's going to be a close game. But the, the, the market says it's going to be a close game. Uh, I like Bengals a little bit. I don't like them enough to play them serious. I think they'll be better spots against weaker teams down the line. Uh, if you wanted to play the Bills in a teaser, I do think this will be a one-score game. But, you know, even some close games could be could be. So with that being 20. said, here's one for you. Would you take then, would you te- Would you open that Buffalo teaser and then here's just me, Baltimore at home, close it? Uh, I don't like that because uh, I, I actually – that I like Seattle. But you like Seattle. Company. Okay. Well, that's then that's, yeah. that's, that's a bad call uh, then. Well, I, I I just think it'll be um man, I don't trust this, Gino. This but you know they can score. And he 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 did some really horrible things like uh, he took the two sacks in the game at, uh uh running uh, backwards, running the other just, way. He just uh, if he can stay away from you know fourth and Throw seven the ball. And just, just wing the ball up in the air, for God's sake. But, you know, if he can just get away from that, they they can score it. They, they have a decent, a better than you think team. And I don't like that Baltimore is not more than a seven point. Okay, uh, that's fair. Save for teasers because I want to, uh, I want to get rid of the seven. I want to come back over the three. And I want to take my opinion out of it because if I have a game like the Saints game, like, wow, they can't score. Why are they laying so much? I don't want to have to speculate. I can play the dog if I want. But if, I, if I'm if i on moon in that game, I can play the Saints minus two. I can play Cleveland this week. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, this I mean, Syke could quarterback, and maybe that's not that bad. Cleveland's got a, got a real good defense. Uh, Tucker blew the game last week. Which is uh, rare. Against, I had plus three and a half in, in full compliance. I had plus three and a half last week with Cleveland. So I um, wasn't real happy to lose by four. And uh, literally get a first down, it's over. It, you know, it happens. People, Other people on social media were crying along with me. I don't think I made a post because I kind of expected it. I said, you know, I'm going to back up here. Anything can happen. And to tell you the truth, Rich, I was watching some other games. I said, oh, look at this. Uh, and, and it leads me back to the years past before you had all this stuff right in your face when you had to watch. Uh, I'm not sure what's better, watching your, you know, a bet of yours lose in the last couple of minutes by a half right as it happens or wait until you don't know how you lost. And then Berman and Tom Jackson would play oh, wait, over- I did- I'll do you better. And, whenever, I, I, and I was such a masochist. I would I would watch it and I would stay up and watch the 2 a.m. replay just wait, to have Bernie, I, these guys I, laugh at me. I'll do you better as you're trolling me on friggin' social media with my Jets and Giants with the worst losses. And then you have to throw poor Sims into it. I mean, you know, classless by you, even though I was laughing. Oh, wait, that's great. Oh, yeah. Wait. You can tell everybody we're watching. Wait, so you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember back in the day, you know, you never got to see the score in the fourth quarter would flash up once or twice with the time. You had no idea how much friggin' time was left unless Summer All Madden brought it up. But then you'd get the dreaded live cut in. Forget the bonus coverage. 
Let's go to New York with Brent for an update. And then I got to watch freaking Kenny O chuck it to Al Toon in the back of the end zone. You're rubbing salt in the wound. So now everything is in real time. Everything is in real time. Everything's in real time. It's for for, for, for those who, who, who bet throughout the last, I don't care how many years, uh, I actually want to look up the last year that they did prime time with Berman and Jackson. Because remember, they did the, the guys were getting blasted across the window. They were telling you, you got knocked out. Remember, they had to stop doing jacked that. Jacked up. You got jacked because up. Because they were getting, so you got jacked up. They were, which, which, you know, somebody, there's some, so, so many witty people on Twitter and on YouTube. They reposted some of this stuff without permission, you know, to really make everybody, it, and it's really cringe that. Uh, you know, to you know, some of these guys are laying unconscious in the thing. But anyway, it's 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 that was crazy, and then it was a crazy world to see. Oh my gosh, how did I lose by a half point? And then you, Berman, you know, telling you, here's how you lost by a half point. So it, it, it's a, uh, it, it's pretty funny. I don't know what's worse. Watch, like I said, watching it uh, when I'm paying attention to another game. I think if you're going to get the poison, you want it right away. You know, you don't want to lament, uh, let that foster, you know, uh, uh, over three hours and then have Berman. Or, or you call a sports right. phone back in the day. You pick up sports phone and, you know, you get charged three ninety nine. <laughs> well, there was a, you know, local, there was, I actually put the number out on Twitter. It was, it was uh, 471, 3000. And it would update every 15 minutes. And uh, it was sponsored by Taux and all, but the guy, who was in New York and Philly who used to deal with hysterical because uh, he would rub salt in the moon. You know, he'd say things like to the Cleveland, if you had Cleveland, you'll guess what happened. You know, you throw that in. The like dagger, with Michael and Sports the Machine. Um, Rich, 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 we would have guys that, were, that weren't allowed to call. Yeah. Listen, get, you're not allowed to call. You're all, you're bad updates. Get out of here. You're not, every, the last 10 times you call, they give it. No. So we were killing the messenger. Uh, um, it's just fun. hey, you so real quick point about the cut ins and, and you know, full slate. And I remember with uh, Kurt Warner, the greatest show on turf in 99, 98 or 98, when they were really in their heyday, uh, the first year of their heyday, because, 99, because they, you know, nobody expected anything of them, right? They lost because, green in the preseason because Trent Green got went down. Uh, Vermeil was the last year of a contract. Uh, people that were Vermeil fans like this area, everybody was rooting for Vermeil to win if, as the second. You know, we were rooting for Eagles in it first and then Vermeil second. Uh, you're almost like, oh my God, they're going to be 5 and 11. Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner of our time, he played for Penn State and he had, you know, he's a borderline Hall of it's Famer. Bad news. Poor, poor Kurt Warner up there. That went, and it was, I mean, he's one of the best running backs ever to play for Seattle but before Sean Alexander. Yep. Kurt Warner, but I said, I remember I used to say that guy's have to change his name. He should have to be called K Warner or something. There's already yeah. a Kurt Warner. Very you know, good like, like Hollywood. So here comes Kurt Warner, and you know, they're smoking people and they do a cut in. They're going for two every time they score. And I remember we're watching the games and look at these pigs. They're not even, they're not. I said, looking for a meal. <laughs> Who, look, who's the offensive coordinator? He didn't have Google rip. Somebody in the back goes, I think it's Marks. Mike I Martin. said, oh, my God, what a pig this Martz is. He's going for two. He's rubbing it in because the kicker got hurt and nobody reported it until it got to halftime. And they said, and Musburger, I almost positive as Musburger comes in, says, hey, folks, this just shows you why, you know, he was definitely firing games because he says, folks, in case you're wondering why they were going for two, here's what happened to the kicker. And everybody's going, oh, look, this is why. You know, the, the kicker got hurt. And I remember one of the guys, I mean, was, maybe they shouldn't play with a kicker. You know, they got the best team. Just keep going for two. Screw it. Yeah. And then remember they played San Fran. And everybody they said, waxed them. Oh, they really that good. And the first updates, you know, 14 nothing. They we waxed like, them. Was that was the game. And then, yep. It, it, uh, uh, a, a, a great time of, you know, again, now with everything at your fingertips, uh, I guess it's better now. Uh but it was kind of fun then when, you know, you had the one, you know, you couldn't find out the information as fast. Uh, it's just, it's it just, it's fun to think back. Sorry about the Giants in 88. I actually, I actually uh, tagged Phil Sims. I did not get a response. Well, nor will you. Um, but listen, so I know I got you for a couple more minutes. Um, I want to get into Bob Knight, but 
any other game or two that um well i played the rams i uh, there was there was a juice three and a half yeah i think it's, Bay, yeah. i think it's slop against slop how about uh, washington new england uh i i, I like new england that, that game did open solidly pr- two and a half it was not three it was it was bet with with modest limits and the reason i make that point was it was a true it was a true move to three yeah. uh it's not quite three and a half but i could uh definitely see this maybe being three and a half uh so i'll tell you right now uh pentacle was uh, a lot of people copied pentacle so it was it was two and a half for okay you know over a day so uh it didn't move because I bet, you know, I, I just happened to get like, I just happened to, uh, to get a two and a half. I, I tell you, to, I, I bet it at three. I think people follow my bet. No way, I think it's good to, to also, it's okay to also bet it at three. Uh, like I said, at Kansas city, uh, at, at the Rams, uh, I did make a modest bet on Seattle. It went to six. It, it's a little scary because, uh, you know, Lamar, Baltimore, look how good they play at home, this kind of thing. Uh, don't f- uh, uh, forget how important a six is. Mm-hmm. A five's a dead number. Because of the two-point conversion, uh, those push charts from 15 years ago, I threw them out. We don't have a ton of data for the new push charts, but my there is some data that says that six is a, is a good number to have. If you're if you have a dog, uh, six and a half obviously is even better uh, because you, it may fall six. My hunch is that six moving forward will be a decent number. It'll never be as strong as three. It'll never be as strong as seven. Uh, but it's not it's not a, a completely dead number. I, I think this game could very well. Would you be surprised if there was a shootout? You know, it's just no. uh, the way that they let. Uh, Lamar still run around for important sh- uh, 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 yards. He fumbles. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that can go there. Uh, I hope for for I, I'm going to root that uh, the line. That, that, uh, of course, I'm greedy. I want Baltimore to win the game, but I, 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 I you know, I'm not probably not going to. Uh, well, I don't, who else plays at one? Uh, I probably wound up watching that. So because I don't think anybody else is important at one. Uh, you do have a t- uh, another slot game. Texans, Buc- uh, Buccaneers. Uh, I don't like the Buccaneers there at all. At all, uh, I think their defense has kind of went, yeah, you know, blah. And I think this is a, a a good game for Houston to uh, uh, play well, and it's a short number. I can see them winning by by a, a, a touchdown. I don't, I don't love it, but if you're undecided, maybe that'll help you. The other really interesting game I just touch on really fast is the Chargers. I do like the Chargers in the game. The best number, Chargers, the, Chargers. the best number is gone. It's it's it, it's really, especially for me, you have to be really better than what the Chargers have been to play this kind of game, but uh, to be a favorite on the road. But I think uh, the the Jets fans who listen to me, there's a couple really good, uh, smart handicapper uh, number guys that are Jets fans who uh, are looking up and they're like, oh my God, Alan, how do we have four? We could have five wins here. Right. Uh, and Rodgers might come back. You're looking a little live for your over because the over with, with Rodgers, there were a lot of nine and a half. Nine and a half. Use nine and a half. Uh, you might if you win this game, you're live for the nine and a half. I think this plunders all that. I think it goes back. We, you talked, we touched earlier on the coaches who might make a mistake. They don't throw the flag. They should put Salah's right in that wheelhouse. I think he's going to do some something dumb. People, the league thinks Staley's dumb. You think Staley's dumb. I don't think Staley's as dumb as everybody thinks. Uh, I think the Chargers. Do a lot of decisions by committee. I think they really do sit down and say, let's look at all the scenarios. Almost like Bill Walsh wrote in his book 30 years ago. Uh, plan for, don't be pre, pre, uh, proactive, not reactive. 
what could happen in this game? How will this look? Uh, Walsh is the first guy. He might not be the first guy to do it, but he's the first guy to talk about it. And I'm not saying it's Staley copies. Remember, they have a young, their GM is the guy from the Colts. He, you know, uh, they have a lot of experience. They have, you know, a data guy who was with, uh, I think he was with the Browns. Not that that's great, but he was with uh, the guy to jump back and forth. I think it was deep pedestrian between baseball and football. Yep. Numbers guys are numbers guys, you know. Uh, 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 so with that being said, this number over two and a half, I, I bet the Chargers as soon as it came out, uh, just because I have a team that, that I think can score yeah. uh, against a team that can't score. Chargers' problem has been their their defense has been really right. bad. I think they'll be – this will make them look look good. It's, it's, they're not going to – Jets aren't going to go out and throw 30 no. points on them. Uh, um, so so that, uh, that's that. Uh, we do have college basketball coming up soon. Uh, I don't – I'm a little different than a lot of uh, college basketball guys. I don't have a huge re – like that first week. A lot of the numbers are, are soft. Uh, I have a good idea. I end up play. I wait a little bit longer. Once you get into January yeah. – the conference, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, I do find some stuff in conference that's decent, but anybody who's been playing college baseball for, for knows that November, December, there's a lot of stuff. So we'll, we'll, we can touch on that as, as it comes up, and then it leads into you know night dying, which is for people that are our age understand how how big this is. People that are a lot older than us. Under, I mean, this guy's how far back this guy goes. Got an undefeated season when I don't even remember. You know, it was when college basketball was was nobody paid any attention to it. Uh, you know, uh, so for people that are, I don't know, God, when's it? so remember St. Joe's in Philly area had a great team for Martelli. They got they had one loss in their tournament. They, they had the run, and they beat a decent Texas Tech. Since the last coaching. Uh, stop yeah. that Knight had. They played uh, a very similar offense that uh, Shashevsky did before he got all the talent, you know, and Shashevsky was getting two all American guys and a guy, you know, guys that fill in, guys like Tommy Amaker. Now he just gets all blue chip guys and he's like, yeah. but he used to run that, that, you know, that motion offense and all and then play defense. It didn't matter who it was, he played man to man and, and uh, I still, to this day, will say if I had one one game and it's even up, even in talent, I'll take night. Uh, and, and people say, why? I said, because the guy uh, knew more about basketball, I think, than all these other guys. And he was ahead Seven, of that. 76, 81, 87, you know, people got on him. You know, Alfred, 84, no Barkley, no Stockton, you know, um, well, think, 84, it was a, if you were going to, you couldn't change who he was. He yeah. wasn't going to change. He was going to have a team. Of Barkley play. would have probably taken a swing at him. So, oh, that, oh, that's a, yeah, that's a great thing for the people that maybe are watching that don't, don't understand, but, but know about Barkley. Uh, and Barkley became the top five pick, not because of what he did at Auburn. He was at Auburn for two years. They underachieved. Uh, nobody paid any attention to him. His freshman year, right? His sophomore year, a little bit. Like you paid attention to, but you know the narrative was Jordan, North Carolina. You played it. You paid attention to the blue chip team, uh, blue chip teams. You uh, you remember? You know it was it was Ewing and Georgetown, the Big East, and Elijah Wine, uh, Houston, Walter Bowery, all the yep. Auburn. We we're like Auburn. Auburn. Who cares about Auburn? What are they doing to? Oh, they got this big giant guy. They call him the round man of rebound. Well, how fat is he? I don't know. Is he a big giant guy? I don't know. Nobody knew. And then you started hearing all the stories. And then this is something that goes back to what we were talking earlier. If you had too much information now, this kind of would have hurt back then because the mythology of Barkley was probably bigger than the truth because we are like, wow, the Olympic trials, they said he was dunking on everybody. He was unbelievable. Blah, 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 blah. And the truth is somewhere in between. The truth is, is he was an elite player and he made it known. I don't care about making this team. I'm here to get my draft stock up. And uh, Knight cut him. 
yeah. and and stopped and stopped last and cut. But but uh, you know, it came down to uh, you know some really good point guards that year. Uh, sadly for the Sixers, they had the 10th pick. They passed on Stockton, took Leon Wood, who's a ref, an NBA ref for 20 years now. Uh, they took Leon Wood, you know, uh, they, they didn't take Stockton. Uh, but uh, that's kind of legacy of light. He, he, all, all night, you were going to play defense. And then now he's, res- you know, everybody put night on a pedestal, even people that don't know because he, he identified Jordan early on before he was drafted. And, and I tweeted at that thing. He said to uh, Rod Thorne, who wanted to draft a center. And he wasn't sure. Because remember, they had a Sam really Bull. weird team. Yeah. Uh, no, well, the Bulls had like Orlando Woolridge and Quentin Daly. They oh, had, yeah, 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 yeah. Prior to, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, back then, the, the thing was get a center, build around the center, yeah. build around the center. You really didn't understand. And, and, and uh, Knight said to Thorne, just, just, Draft Jordan. He was Draft like, Jordan. you know, we need center. And he goes, well, just play Jordan at center then. Because if you play him there, it'll be the best center. So the, it's just a great quote because it's just say wherever he's gonna wherever he's gonna play, he's gonna be great. Yeah, so he's who gonna cares? Dominate. Uh so that's Knight's legacy. I think he's the best coach of our time because he hated the three point line. Hated it. But when they instituted it, what happened? He used it. And you and Alfred was one of the best three three point shooters. Got those perimeter guys. People forget this ever. He's one of the best ever. Now he was slow. He wasn't that big. Uh, he got caught in a bad situation in the pros. But I'm telling you, he was as good as Kerr. He was good as a lot as almost any of these guys. You can go back and look at shooting percentage, and they used it all the way through the tournament. They went the whole way. And uh, sadly, Knights only lost that he probably should have won. And I think. He had close to the better team was the '92 team when he had Calvert Cheney mm-hmm. and uh, the uh, Damon Bailey. Damon Bailey, and Mr. Uh, Indiana. He had a great team, and that's the famous where he loses to Duke, and it's really close. And, and they, they they had a couple turnovers late, and Knight's so aggravated he walks by Shashevsky, shakes his hand, and keeps on walking. And they don't talk for a year. And in one of the books, Feinstein wrote, wrote, he said that, you know, it bothered Krzyzewski for a long time. So Krzyzewski said, you know what? F him. And then, it, and then it seems like just when that happened, you know, Mike got wind of it and called him. So it's just like he played mind games with everybody. If anybody had the edge, he, he was the best at it before it, it was popular. And, uh, uh, it, you know, I'm not going to talk about all oh, those all the crazy flaws because guess what? If he had existed now, I don't know what would have happened. He would have been run out on a rail. He would. I don't know. I don't know where the heck he could have coached. You could, you cannot coach like that anymore. Uh, I don't even know if you can curse like that anymore. No. Uh, can you? He would have been, he would have been with Norman Dale. It's 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 <laughs> yeah yeah. It's just an incredible thing. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. You want to talk, mention real quick about Harden? Yeah, everything you said, man, Harden is, it encap- is, listen, it encapsulated it 100%, man. You got the last well, Somebody, off, somebody had great. the best quote. I heard it 10 times. You had the two best days in Philadelphia, the, the, the days you, uh, yeah, two best days in any NBA fan's life is the day you trade for Harden and then the day you trade to get rid of him. Well, that's so, like having you know, a boat. It's right? the same thing Buy as the boat. I heard it 50 times. I still think it's good the 51st time. It's because... It's true. You have so much expectation with Harden. I was relieved when they got yeah. Harden, but to get rid of there him. was part of me that said, you know what? You're getting them too, too late. Uh, there's repercussions for playing bad in game sevens. And uh, Harden can blame Sixers all he wants. We saw a technical where he, he dumped on purpose. And it's a problem in the NBA that we'll touch on as, as it goes on. Uh, I I put that I this idea out on Twitter. I got a lot of people that backed it uh, or liked it. They agree, uh, and it's it's you. The guy, I don't I don't ever want to say the players are making too much. I'm not that kind of guy. I, I, the owners are making. Everybody's making a lot of money. Uh, Barkley actually, I, I lied. Barkley agrees. Barkley's hammers these guys, but you know the players get on Barkley. You're just jealous because you missed. The big boat. Listen, Barkley's making. He won't even tell yeah, you what well, he's making. Barkley's yeah. making over hundred million. Would be easy. 
Uh, so he, he's not hurting for money. He, it's not the money. What Barkley says is true. These guys would play for, for $5 million if it wasn't for the agents. Yep. But you can't have the owners making billions. But the problem you have is you have too many people or now many businesses. They're making business decisions. Harden makes business decisions. They don't care about championships. Nope. That's why they're that's why they're on the minutes. It's a big problem for the league. Only a guy like maybe Popovich. That's why we got the over in, in over 28, both of us. And they look great. They they were killing the Suns last night. You know, yep. Suns came all the way back. I turned it off. I didn't want to see them blow a 27-point lead. I checked this morning, they won by nine. Uh but I think only a guy like Popovich is going to be able to control some of these players. Uh, I'm on a fade. I don't think the Clippers are going to win. You're going to guarantee that the Clippers are going to go to the finals. You're going to rest everything on, on, on Kyrie Leonard. Oh, if we get yeah. these guys are done. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still going to stick with the Suns beating them. Uh, but it's a long season. It, it's going to come down to whoever plays team ball. Whoever cares about the team, I think the Celtics care. I think the Suns and Devin Booking, Booker care. I think KD obviously cares. He wants to prove something. And I think uh, the Nuggets care. Now, well, the caring, you'll see what comes out. Yeah. But uh, that's how it's going it to – we'll, we'll talk about that throughout. Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Fantastic. No, fantastic stuff. As always, he gave some really strong plays to the prop for this weekend in the NFL. I know he's going to tweet some of them out. We'll put it up as well on the YouTube channel. As always, Friday edition from our wonderful friends, as we mentioned, played against sports. They got the sales coming up leading into the week of Black Friday. Check them out online. Put on location, New Jersey. And again, uh, you'll get a nice little kick back, if you will, on both ends of it. If you mention right here on BYP, give the prop a follow at Professor Shine. Hopefully he's not going to troll Sims this Sunday. The Giants might get a win. But with all that being said, fantastic put, put a little coin Take in it. your pocket, my <laughs> friend. Always appreciate you uh, jumping on a Friday. We'll do it again next week. Take care. Thank you.